his life and for what it was going to become was already handled for it, right? There's no interference. There's nothing to do. You just have to allow. The child comes out and we take it and say, that was great work, God, now we'll take over from here. <laughs> you know, and, and in the process of taking over, we start to mold it into becoming more like we were molded. And it takes on an ego and it starts to believe all of that stuff. I am what I have. I am what I do. I am what other people think of me. I am my reputation. I'm separate from everyone. I have to compete. And, and all of this stuff becomes the training ground. My friend Tiffany, who has a little daughter, her name's Ohia, and we were talking yesterday at dinner with our friends. She raised her little girl with uh, something called the continuum process. You know what it is? It's essentially a way to raise children by not interfering, by knowing and trusting and never telling them to be careful and never telling them where to put their feet or never telling them anything unless absolutely their life is in danger. And even in the basis of it, their life never gets in danger because they already know so quickly. They learn to uh, disavow that because they're surrounded by people who want to do it for them. It's fascinating. It's called the continuum process, I believe. So all of us have have been raised this way and we have this thing and it begins to take over for us and it becomes the guiding force in our life. So what I'd like to do is to help people to see that they can, uh, they can overcome that. And a lot of the stuff that we have been trained to believe is not overcomable is in fact overcomable, if that's a word. In fact, there's literally nothing about us that at any time, rather quickly, we can overcome and transcend. So in the process of getting ready to do this writing on how to overcome habituated thinking, I read three books. The first of these three books is what I want to just share with you. It's a mind-blowing book. And I've come to know the author because after I read it, I wanted to meet him. Then I did, and I invited him to come to uh, Las Vegas and be a part of uh, I Can Do It and to become a part of the Hay House family, and his name's Bruce Lipton, and the book's called The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracles, and basically what the biology of belief taught me is that beliefs can overcome your genetics. So the big excuse that so many of us have is that I couldn't help it. It's just in my genes. And a lot of us perverts have used that over the years, you know. That wasn't me, that was my hand. I can't help my hand. It just goes where, you know, I can't, it's not... And besides, I'm part of, you know, the male consciousness, and we're here to procreate, and, uh, you know, we're just keeping the human race going. You can't blame us for wanting to keep doing that with everyone. I mean, it's not our fault, you know, kind of, and vice versa. You hear all of the, the crazy stories that people tell about their DNA. In fact, even on TV, I was listening to someone being interviewed, and he said those very words. He said, well... You know, they got a, the DNA, and you can't change your DNA, so that's the one thing. And what you'll find out when you read uh, Bruce's book. Bruce uh, was at the University of Wisconsin Medical School. He taught medical students for 20 years. And then he was at Stanford University, and he taught in medical schools. And he taught in the Caribbean in medical school. And finally, he had to leave medical schools teaching as a full professor of cellular biology because he began to realize that the research was showing that what they were teaching was not true. That essentially what medicine teaches is that there are basic building blocks that cause the human being to be a certain way, and they're fixed, and this is what they are, 
and there's the double helix and all of our genetic structure and the ways that we treat the human body when it starts to break down or when it isn't working or whatever is through the administration mostly of drugs or through surgery. And he began to realize that perception and how you perceive something in your life is um, more significant than whatever is going on in the biology of your body. And what reading this gave me, what it gave me was the ability to think with awareness rather than just to think. That's the first principle of the seven principles. It's, it's like awareness, thinking with awareness. Thinking with awareness is very different than just thinking. And thinking with awareness means that you don't think from the false self. The false self is all filled with excuses. You move to a higher place. And so when you have anything physical going on in your body, and all of you do, there's something going on someplace. There's flus, there's headaches, there's backaches, there's cancers, there's arthritis, there's heart disease, there's just, everybody's got stuff going on in their bodies. And we know we're going to leave these bodies behind at some time because it's not really who we are. But while we're in them, we would like them to function at the level that they were supposed to function at, that we originated from, which is well-being. Our bodies are perfect creations of God. They are not created by human beings. They're created by God. All being comes from non-being. And it's why muscle testing and kinesiology work so well, is because you're using the body to determine whether something is true or not, and the body isn't a man-made thing. It can only react to truth with strength because it's creation of pure truth. Pure truth is pure God. So that when you get down to the basic level of what this body is, and you begin to test it by having thoughts in it, and if a thought is one that's going to weaken you, you will see that when you think it. And we could demonstrate that up here. It's so easy to do. All you have to do is read Power Versus Force if you haven't read it. Perhaps the most important and significant book I've read in 10 years, when I had read this, really turned my life around. And it's really about understanding that everything has energy. Everything has energy. Every thought that we have has energy. And imagine you getting a diagnosis of something in your body. And you immediately go to thinking, not from awareness, but thinking from an ego consciousness and a belief system. And then you go to places where the belief system is that your beliefs don't really matter that much. But imagine if you began to discover, if you began to realize, and if you absolutely came to know that if you change the thoughts that you have about what is going on in your body or your child's body or your husband's body or whatever, if you changed around the way that you process that and began to think of it in terms of God consciousness, awareness, instead of fear, and what is happening to me, and you began to realize, now, what is God consciousness? God consciousness is the highest consciousness. It's city consciousness. It's the Tao. And God consciousness, according to Jesus, is with God, all things are possible. Now, you tell me what that leaves out. leaves out nothing, doesn't it? Now imagine if that's how you began to train yourself to think. And then they started looking at your DNA strands. And they began to train your mind to perceive something going on in your body, not from a perspective of it's going to get worse, this is going to kill me, I am very sick. Even if all of that was true, if you began to shift your thoughts to all things are possible, and I have the ability within me to change the way I perceive this, and as I change that around, I can shift the DNA in my body and have a different DNA reading than I had before I trained myself to do that. Now this, I mean, I can see people going, and those are reflections of doubt which is great. You should have that. Examine it. Begin to think about it. 
And as you make this shift, you're getting rid of the biggest excuse. This is why I'm starting with the big one, and the next one's even more astonishing. The big 